Uh, you can see it through Mason just because he's an ATL boy, but at the same time, he sound got that Puerto Rican, you know, that, that style, that swag, so on. Welcome in to Hanging with Hoover. Roger Hoover now joined by Jumbo Shrimp center fielder Monte Harrison, also regarded as the Miami Marlins' top prospect entering this season. But do you like that label at all, prospect or even top prospect? Uh, I don't try to worry about it. You know, uh, a lot of people in the game of baseball try to get caught up in the whole prospect thing, but at the end of the day, everybody has a chance to make it to the big leagues. That's the way I see it, so everybody's a prospect. Um, the numbers really don't dictate anything. That's kind of just like... Uh, who gets drafted the highest is in my personal opinion and it doesn't really matter till you get into pro ball and You have to really prove yourself. You know what I mean? So um, It doesn't really affect me in any way. How's the season going for you? What's the transition been like to double-a baseball? Uh, it's a little different, you know, but baseball is baseball at the end of the day you're making adjustments at every level Every level has some type of challenge to it. And you gotta you gotta face it. So um, Jacksonville is a little different coming on a new organization stuff like that and um uh, first time in double-A, but no, nah, man, I started off the season kind of rough, but um, definitely made some adjustments. What were some of those adjustments that you started to get hot to play? Uh, mostly just getting good pitches to hit. I know pitchers are going to try to pitch me certain ways and not try to fall into their trap. So just getting good pitches to hit, and when I get my pitch, don't miss it. That's right, and you also seem like you've gotten more comfortable, especially in this series against Tennessee. You've gone up now against some guys you saw before in the last series. Yeah. As we start seeing these teams more and more throughout the summer, you think you're going to get even more comfortable? Exactly, but also at the same time, we're going to get comfortable too, knowing what I can hit and what I can't, you know what I mean? But I try to put myself in the best position to be successful, and that's a good hitting position and taking hits away from other teams when I can't get them. Play center field at the baseball grounds of Jacksonville. Very unique, 420 feet straight away center. Yeah. Uh, probably the deepest outfield you ever played in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, but, you know, you got some big parks in Arizona playing in spring training and stuff like that. But, uh, no, definitely during the season, this is definitely one of the biggest. But a lot of ground to cover in the outfield, and you got to hit balls pretty hard to head it out to center field. And what's the challenge of playing center field in a park like this? Uh, not trying to give up those triples. You know, if that ball's hit the right center or left center, Pretty much kind of almost guaranteed it's a triple. So uh, just trying to take those away. Extra base hits is the game nowadays. And uh, try to limit those as much as possible. Of course, you came to the Marlins in the Christian Yelich trade. Uh, where were you when you first heard about the news? What was your reaction when you knew you were traded? Um, honestly, I, I kind of knew uh, about it before, you know, seeing stuff on Twitter and stuff like that. So um, first time I heard it, I was actually helping this kid coach. His name is Max. And, uh, you know, um, Got one of those phone calls. I was on a phone call with somebody else, and uh, I got a test message, uh, and I was like, ah, oh, man, I know what this is. Uh, so I gave uh, the farm director a call back, and uh, he told me that I got traded. So um, a great opportunity for me over here in Miami, but um going to miss those guys over there in Milwaukee, too, at the same time. So you joined the Marlins, but you're not the only guy in the trade. Lewis Brinson, who's now the center fielder for the Marlins, mm -hmm. also your teammate here, Isan Diaz. And then we haven't seen a pitch yet, but Jordan Yamamoto, we've heard a lot of good things about him. Yeah. You had to be excited you're headed to this organization with those guys. Yeah, definitely, 100%, just to know um, just the opportunity we get. I know uh, the Marlins are making big moves, trying to get new prospects and stuff like that. But uh, at the same time, I try not to really think about it. I just try to go out and play baseball and try to learn every single day to get better and then get to the big leagues and help the big league team win. Was spring training fun for you? You had a lot of time in big league camp. Yeah, I mean, big league, first big league camp, you know, it didn't know what to really expect. I mean, the Brewers I went over a couple times, like here and there, but um, being over every day, it was, it's a little bit different. You know, first one, they said it's going to be a little different, but I can't wait to continue that down the road. All right, you've had a really good career so far in baseball. You probably could have had a good career in football, basketball as well. So you're a multi-talented athlete in high school. What would you like more, though, baseball, basketball, or football? Baseball. Um, well, baseball later on, like growing up in high school. But <laughs> started off, it was more basketball, you know, just because that's one of the easiest things you could have played. And uh, I was best at it at the time. So, um, But now, once I got older and older, I started playing more baseball. I fell in love with it. And then... That's what ultimately led up to the decision to play baseball. People really didn't understand um, the baseball side because they didn't really see me play. So um, the people who really saw me play knew, like, man, this kid could be really good in baseball. The only thing they, they care about is the hype and, you know, football and stuff like that. So um, I, did, I did what my heart told me. And, and, and ultimately it told me later on, like, I, I knew things were falling into place when other things happens outside of, uh, of the, the baseball plan. And you had an offer to play football and baseball in Nebraska. Did any schools recruit you for basketball? I had a couple, but um, I told them early on that I didn't really want to play basketball anymore. It wasn't uh, the dream of 6-3, power four wasn't really, wasn't really uh, normal, you know, in college basketball these days. So uh, it wasn't my way, sorry. 
Now, your brother was a great player at Tulsa. Now, Shaquille's with the Phoenix Suns in the NBA. When was the last time you guys played one-on-one? One-on-one? We haven't played one-on-one since high school. And that was like sophomore year, my sophomore year of high school or something like that. But ever since we started playing together, I mean, we always played with each other, so it would be kind of weird to play against each other. But um, as young, like, we played together all the time. Like, we just, you know, let's go play basketball, all right? But nah, we haven't played each other in a long time. How proud are you of him making it to the NBA? Oh, man, he's definitely has some difficult journeys. I know um, he's one of those people that's always been slept on, uh, you know. And, um, growing up, he's just always a kid that kind of was kind of was the second option, you know what I mean? Like, oh, we don't we think you're too small. We think you too, you don't have this, you don't have that. But a kid has heart. If you got heart, I'll take that at the end of the day over anything. You can have all the skills in the world, but at the end of the day, what's going to push you to it? And he pushed, man. He never gave up, and he always said he's going to make it to the NBA. So when it finally happened, I mean, it was no big surprise to me. I was like, now it's really time to go go do your thing. And once he started doing that, he got those two 10-day contracts and then the multi-year deal. So, man, congrats to him. And he's going to continue to work hard just to prove that he belongs in the NBA. We're going to see him in Jacksonville at all this summer? Uh, he actually come here next week. Next week. Okay. Yeah. Good deal. So you now, like I mentioned, you're great in football, basketball, yeah. baseball. Baseball ended up winning out for you, but I noticed watching some highlights, you're always wearing number three. Why is that number special to you? That's what you wear now in Jacksonville. Uh, just a family thing, man. Everybody in the family, we always uh, we always wore the number three just because of AI. I mean, AI was one of those guys you you knew it was a uh, he kind of gets the bag for being a bad boy and stuff like that, but. No, nah, man, just the, the type of person he was and uh, how he grew up and stuff like that, that kind of like modeled who we was. So uh, we just adapt with that number. Never we go, we try to get that number. So Now, what's your walk-up song with Jumbo Shrimp? Why'd you pick it? Uh, I got two of them, Beebs in the Trap by Travis Scott. And just because it's a catchy song, I don't know, it's just one of those songs that really uh, catches my, my eye, you know what I mean? And uh, Drake, 5 a.m. Toronto, is just one of those. Um, a lot of people don't understand that song has a lot of a lot of meaning to it, and the way it starts off, and it's just you don't you don't underestimate it greatly. Uh, just one of those things like people people see me when I was young, people always underestimated me just because I was little and stuff like that. So that song kind of just stuck with me all the time, and then uh, kind of motivated me into what I am today. Now those are your walk up songs. Who on the jumbo shrimp do you like their walk up songs the most? Who gets you fired up, even if you're just in the dugout or on the bases? Mason Davis. Light Show. Light Show definitely is one of those. Uh, that actually just came out not too long ago by Future and EJ Esco. So uh, when he walks up to the play, I kind of get excited just to hear that song. So. <laughs> now, a couple more things about your teammates. Who has the best style on the team? Who's always best dressed coming to the park? Best dressed? Yeah. Um, I got to say Mason again. Mason Mason or Isan. Um, those guys come to the park well, pretty well dressed. So, uh, you, got, you can see it through Mason just because he's an ATL boy, but at the same time, Isan got that Puerto Rican, you know, that, that style, that swag. So, uh, got to give it to one of those two. Like, I can't really put a finger on it, but they bring some swag to the field. Gotcha. Now, in the Southern League, we have some very long bus rides. Of course, uh, I guess your first one was the longest one you could possibly have going to Jackson. Yeah. How do you stay entertained during bus rides? Are you trying to sleep through all of it? What's your go-to to get through it? Man, bus rides are so difficult, especially in this league, just because you're riding a lot of time, like, at night. And I know tomorrow we, we got to leave right after the game. So, one of those times is just... Um, how can you fight to get through that, that, that downtime of being bored? You know, you can only watch so many movies and stuff like that. But no, nah, man, just try to sleep through everything. Um, probably pretty much just motivate my mind just to know that the next day I get to play baseball and that's what I'm going. And, and it works usually. But um, no, nah, man, bus rides in the, in the Southern League, especially for Jacksonville, they're terrible. Um, I wouldn't wish that upon my part, worst enemy. Well, it is a good thing we are able to call Jacksonville our home city. I know you've had games pretty much every night, and it was pretty rushed from spring training getting here. But have you had the time to really explore the city very much at all or get out and do much here? Uh, yeah, I've been to the beach a couple of times, you know. Uh, I've gone to a couple of places, top golf, stuff like that. But, um, no, nah, man, I'm here to play baseball, and that's that's what I want to do. I don't, I don't try to really uh, – put my main focus on other things off the field because you know that those things can lead to other things and I really don't try to put myself in those situations. My opportunity is on the field and that's where I want to be. Last thing I'm going to ask you, what is one thing that in any interview or any magazine article written about you that you wouldn't be able, people would not be able to learn unless you were able to tell them? What's one thing you want fans to know about you that nobody would be smart enough to ask you? Um, honestly, I don't know. I can't, I can't even answer that if I'm being perfectly honest. I'm, uh, a lot of people say that I'm uh, kind of guarded off just because, um, uh, I don't know, just kind of the personality I am. Once you get to know me, uh, 
you really find out things. But no, man, I, try, I really try to just stay to myself. And if people ask things, then I'll tell them. But at the same time, I just, I just stay to myself and try to do my thing. I got you, Almonte. Thanks for hanging with Uber. No problem. Thank you. Appreciate it. See ya.